Hey, what's up? This is TJP, and you're listening to the Three Count Podcast. Welcome, everybody, to another great edition of the Three Count Podcast presents Now Entering the Ring, and I am your host, Clifford Red Dog Miller. That's right, the man that leads you up this mountain called wrestling. Normally, I would tell you that every good Sherpa has to have someone who's been there, done that, and can do it more efficiently than you can. But today is kind of a unique situation because who's in training today? Well, this man can be found training at Palm Meadows Wrestling Academy. He is out of Columbia, South Carolina, and I found him on TikTok. People were bashing him because he is just training. So, you know. We had to bring him on the show, let people know that he's going to be legit, and he is going to be a future legend in this sport, so y'all need to keep your heads up and keep your ears to the ground for the man himself, D'Angelo. What's up, man? What is good, bro? All right, let's get into it. Yeah, man, so shoot style, man, real talk. We uh, That's exactly how I found you, man. I found you uh, training, and yep. I was like, damn, dude, I was like, this is kind of cool. Let me, let me grab this kid. I saw a bunch of dudes like out there just talking about you and talking about how like y'all oh, well, you, you train in the basement blah 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 and I was like hey, bro man. like y'all have no idea <laughs> All right. how hard this is to All just right. one find a training school two and just keep repeatedly taking bumps in and out man so I was like let me grab this guy and then we're gonna talk about you know where you at and what you're doing and what you're looking to do in this sport man so first right. question I'm gonna have for you man who is D'Angelo who is D'Angelo um. So D'Angelo wasn't just a character that I created. Like D'Angelo, well, for one, is is not a shoot name either. It's my middle name. So uh I like growing up, like you know how like you go to school every day and you're just like vibing. But then like your mom takes you shopping and you get that fresh outfit, fresh shoes. So like when I went to school was those days, I was D'Angelo. So like I always prevent I always present D'Angelo as my best self. You know. Yeah, no, no, oh. I like it. I like it because it's funny because, like, me, you know, like, the name Red Dog comes from, you know, Clifford, the big red dog. Obviously, when mm-hmm. I say that my first name is Clifford, like, people, it finally clicks with people. Yeah. Like, oh, I was like, and it's a name that I took with me because, you know, I was getting picked on in school like that. And I was like, seeing you and just seeing all the hate that was kind of being tossed at you on oh, TikTok, yeah. I was like, bro, like, that's not acceptable. I was like, I've seen this before, and I've watched it happen. So I was like, let me grab this dude. Let me go talk to him. Let me bring him on my podcast because this this is probably one of my favorite things to get to do is to get to reach out and talk with people. But, right. yeah, just to let you know, too, man, like, my nickname came from all the kids picking on me. So I was like, fuck these dudes. <laughs> right. <laughs> now, the guy that was talking trash on TikTok, he actually reached out to me. He apologized. That I mean, that's why I didn't, like, respond disrespectfully. Right. Like, yeah, that makes me look bad. Like, I, I kind of humbled him, I feel like, but nah, I don't I don't pay attention to anything like that. Um truth is like uh and I like also outside of wrestling, I coach football and like I tell my kids all the time, like people are gonna talk about you to the day you die. Like and especially getting into what we do, like wrestling is such a I don't even know how to explain it. There, there's so there's so many politics behind wrestling that like I don't I don't pay attention to what people have to say. I just keep showing up and doing what I do. Nope. I love my haters. Like I love my people who love me. Right. The reason why is because they both spread my brand and I don't care. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. It's the best though, man. That's why I try to tell people like this, this sport is unique, man. Like in a sense mm-hmm. that you, you work with people to help you get to the next spot that you're trying to get to. But what's more important is that with this spot though, like, you have the ability to influence so many other generations of people who are coming through or people who want to come talk to you, you know? So for you, man, I'm just very curious, like being in your, your position, right? What does it mean to be someone of a person of color coming into this sport and then trying to set that example of like, Hey, this is what I'm trying to portray. So I, I take that very personally, like, especially cause I'm not like based right out of Columbia. I actually come from a small town called Swansea, which is like 30 minutes from Columbia. And I mean, in my hometown, everybody sees football as the way out. And I mean, originally for me, that was my way out. And like, just getting into wrestling, like, and coming back and coaching at my hometown. And I just, I really feel like me doing this gives them something to look at and like show them that there's more ways to get out 
than by being a football player or like just going and getting a regular day job. Because like in my hometown, wrestling isn't seen seen as like a career. It's seen as a hobby or something you do for fun. And realistically, like it took my family a little a little time to come around to me like letting go of college football and but like chasing my dream. So I just feel like I just feel like I have to be here and I have to do this to show people that like this is legit and I can make a way for my family and for my community by doing it. I like that though, man, because you know I, I grew up from a small town as well, uh, outside this place called Baird, Nebraska, right? Okay. Uh, and currently I live like in 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 uh, outside of Baltimore. So okay. anyway, coming from coming from uh, Baird, right? I went back to go visit my hometown, and uh, I was just super excited. And one of my teachers had seen me, and she's like, "Hey, you need to come talk to our class." And I was like, "Bet." So at this time, like I was in the Air Force, I really wasn't doing anything. I was just I was in a in a pretty specialized field. And uh, I go back, I'm talking to him, right, about things like, hey, man, like, don't think that you're locked here. This is this is a great area. Like, if you want to grow up and like, have kids and stuff like that, it's cool. But if you're trying to grow, you got to get out. And uh, my teacher came right behind. Yeah, this place is in a black hole. You, There's there's more than one way to get out. I was like, oh, right. wow, I did not want that to be known at all. <laughs> like, I want everybody to be, like, I want you to be happy where you're at. But at the same time, like, once like people started seeing that this is what I was doing was chasing after my dream, like I think a lot of other kids back in my hometown were like, "Well, if he's doing it, then I should be trying to do what I want to do too." And I, I like right. the fact that you're trying to set the example for your kids, and you're yeah. out there talking to them about like, "Hey, there's more than one way to get out of the area that you're at, right?" Because like I know Columbia, the Gamecocks, man, like everybody knows, like that's what it's about, right? Because I come from a place where Nebraska, like that's football, like ne- oh, yeah. Nebraska life. So oh, yeah. I, I can relate with that, man. It's crazy, too, because, like, even, like, a person of uh, being, like, Hispanic, right? I'm, I'm a Latin Latin male trying to make it through the business as well. And it's it's tough sometimes because I pass off and I get it. Like, I get, like, the pass card because I have light skin. Mm-hmm. But I'm always trying to set the example for people, like, who are trying to make it in this business that are in the Hispanic communities because even if they're, like, luchadors or whatnot, like – I, I get it, but I'm not like, I'm not a high flyer. Like I'm just a dude that just wants to ground pound people. <laughs> and uh, so I'm trying to tell people like, there's more variety out there. And, right. and you know, you don't have to be like the drug dealer or you don't have to be oh, yeah. like the stereotypical dude that people assume that, you know, whether, whether you're black or you're Latino, we're not that person. Like right. we have so yeah. many, there's so many different personalities out there. And that's why I want to, I want to inspire Mike my community to be like, yeah, we're going to be like that dude. Cause that dude's fucking crazy. <laughs> I, I admire that for real. And uh, that's really why I love like training with Ethan. Like I got to give him a shout out. Cause that guy, he's all about diversity through everything. Like it, there's no black or white. It's just, you are who you are. And like our wrestling school, like we're a family, like, and I'm not, I'm not talking down to any other wrestling schools whatsoever, because I'm sure there are a lot of great schools out there, but like, like you go to shows like like we our big show that we set up for is a PWX which runs out of Charlotte. Um, yeah. man, like our our team we just show up and show out at every show. Like we come in, we get the ring up, we're laughing, having a good time. Like during the show, we're keeping the crowd into it. Like it's it's bigger than just going in the ring and taking bumps. Like, and even stands on that because he's like, man, you can take all the bumps in the world. But if you're not a family and you're not a, a a locker room guy, like somebody that everybody wants to be around, then it's not going to really work out for you here. Because, like, no. nobody's going to want to work a guy that just comes in as selfish and is a, a me person. Yeah, and that's the one thing right. I love about I love about wrestling. It's a lot like in the military as well. It's like everybody's, like, fighting for, like, the same goal. And I only say it in the sense that not so much, like, everybody's, like, you know, everybody knows that there's so many spots, but everybody's working to put on the best product, right? So whether you're trying to be like, you're just like the squash guy or you're trying to put on like the 30 minute classics, right? Or whatever, whatever, whatever seems to be whatever's on the card. I love seeing everybody fight for that goal to like entertain the fans. Cause I think that's where we all understand. Like that's where it all comes down to like those fans, like maybe you're at a show where there's maybe like 15 to 20 people, right? Mm. You're doing whatever you can to like, get in front of those 15 20 people and make sure that they have a good time at the show just like you would do if you're in front of a crowd of like six or seven thousand people 
Right. So I definitely, I definitely can relate and definitely like the fact that you're like, we talk about family and we're about showing up and showing out because I know for us, like the crew that I go with, like we are loud, we're boisterous, like people know we're around all right. the time. <laughs> oh yeah. And that's how it should be, man. That's how it should be. Cause like, and that's really what got me started on this whole TikTok thing. Cause um, like just interacting with fans at shows, like I was like, man, like if I can like get them to like remember me up until the point where I'm here, like that, I feel like that's how you build a fan base. And that's really how I got started with the whole, like posting my wrestling stuff on TikTok. Cause like, if you go back, it's like my very first videos, I was just posting like bullshit for giggles. But now I'm like, I, I still do that every once in a while, but like, I just started like plugging my training videos and it started getting a big reaction. And I was like, man, like, this is incredible. Like, this is how I can connect with people. Cause like, we have all these resources now, man. Like you got to take advantage of it. And that's why I, that, I tell my classmates that all the time. Yeah, there's no reason, like, in this generation, because, like, in previous generations, it'd be a little harder, you know what I mean, like, to 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 get over with, like, a crowd that maybe you're not familiar with, right? So right. let's say you were from, like, the Massachusetts area, and you're going out to, to Los Angeles, right, into California. Right. And this is, well, do we'll even predate it, right? Predate, like, the internet, right? And even social media, right? So we... Some guy gets out there and people are like, I don't really know who this is, but share form or not, right? You better be the most entertaining dude in the fucking world. Oh, yeah. Otherwise, people are going to be like, why do we want this guy back? Exactly. But I think social media gives you such a unique presence that you can put out your best info or you can put out your worst info. It doesn't really matter. But right. people are going to react to it. And that's ultimately what we want. We want reactions out of, this, out of the crowd. And I, I love the fact that we get to uh, entertain from just all aspects, right? Because I have. I would have never imagined. I have fans that live in like in Oklahoma. I have fans that are out in Hawaii. I have fans oh, that wow. are up in Alaska. I, bro, like 15 years ago, I would have never imagined that would have been a thing that would have happened for me. But it is it is wild to see like people watch my my videos and they're just like, oh, I like him. Oh, I like the yeah. gunshot thing that he does. It's weird, but it's kind of cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, social media, it plays a big role. And I got I to gotta give another shout out to one of my classmates. Her name is Gina. She, um... She started a vlog like our very first week of training and she posts like every Friday and like I go back and watch it all the time and just see our growth from a year ago to now. Cause like we've been training for a year. Um it's it's just it's incredible. And she's done a phenomenal job with it. It's a it's called the Ace Wrestling Vlog. She you, she usually posts every Friday around twelve. So okay. uh, yeah, it, it's amazing. And like just seeing how much I've changed as a person since day one. And how we changed as a team, like I was gonna say, how weird is it to like watch your first videos? Oh and man, it's like, uh, what was I doing? <laughs> like, man, earlier I went back and watched the the one from the first time we ran ropes, and man, I'm just like, Ugh, like <laughs> I wasn't messing her and be like, yo, please take that down. <laughs> <laughs> it was horrible. Like from that to our first promo day, uh, we cut our first promos and. Like I came in because there's like hard nosed promo about being this hostile football player, and now I'm just like that. That's not who I am. Like that's who I was. That's a gimmick I was trying to create. But the uh, best thing my trainer ever told me, and he told everybody this. Uh, he was like, "You can come up with this gimmick and like try to make it something that you're not, and that's cool. But what the crowd hasn't seen, like nobody's seen you be yourself." And that's what's gonna get their attention. And he says it all the time. And like, I've I've just taken it and ran with it. So I don't, I don't, I don't really want to be nothing but myself in the ring. So I'm glad you I'm glad you said that, man, because I hear that a lot. And I know for me, like, it's stuck true. But then I see that, like, I so I try to do that with the students that come to our school, right? And they they always try to put out this persona. Like I talked to like one of my friends, right? He's one of the students, but he's also a friend of mine. Um, and I'm not gonna put his name out there. He knows who he is. But uh he like does this persona where he's like, Yeah, I'm I'm deep, I'm dark, I'm angry. I was like, dude, every time you come up here, you are nothing but smiles when you're taking bumps. Right. I was like, if you want to play that tough guy, go ahead. But the problem you're gonna run into is that there's gonna be 10 other guys who play that tough guy, and they may play better than you do. Like, so you need to find out who you are and unlock what you do. And I'm glad you said it, like you keep it real to yourself because Ultimately, your your character, who you are, your gimmick is supposed to be an extension of what you are. And right. I love the, I love that you're saying like 
yeah, I, I changed my whole – I started off as this football player gimmick. I know another person who did that. He was kind of a grim, maybe a hitman for hire. But, um, <laughs> you know, he – then he he found, like, who he was, and now he's just, like, this devastating force up and down the East Coast. But for you, I'm glad that you were, like – I started off as this football gimmick, and I realized this wasn't it, and now you're just authentically who you want to be. Right. All right. And, I, and the cool thing about it is, like, I can still tie in my football background and like set that presence that like yo like I hit people for real like I literally um it's just I I just think it's really cool that I can still tie it in and like set that presence but like I don't have to rely on being the football player you know and then you can even have like a move set where you're just like you know, you're, you're, you're having your football background, right? Like right. The person comes right in, you can either spear that person, you can shoulder block that person. You can, you know, if you, you want to pretend like you're on the offensive side and you just pancake a dude, like oh, you can put all that stuff in there. Like nothing says, mm-hmm. like, and that's the cool thing I love about wrestling is nothing says that you can't put the things in there that you want to do. Right. You just got to be authentic to who you are. I really, I can't wait till my, uh, my classmates listen to this. Cause uh, like they, they know how, like how, near and dear i hold the spirit to my heart because i mean <laughs> that that's really like seeing that move as a child that's really what like drew me to wrestling i was like man like this is just like tackling somebody like i grew up watching uh i think the first person i saw hit one was probably like edge mm-hmm. and I, I, i'm a 2000 baby so everybody's <laughs> always like oh goldberg like that was way before my time right but, I think the one, the person who made me like fall in love with the move was actually Moose. Like, okay, I I grew, I was a, I was a big Impact fan growing up, uh, so like I would sit and watch Moose all day long, and that spirit is just majestic. Like, I love it. I think the only thing I have a problem with Moose's spear and Moose, no disrespect to you, but right. it's that little flip that he does at the end. I just I don't I don't dig with it. I like watching guys when they like stick them. Like, like if you watch Goldberg Spears, man, from like the midnight, like late nineties, like he was like, you can see he was trucking dudes. Oh yeah, and it looked just devastating every single time. But then like you had those, you know, Edge does it too, but he does that whole knee thing too, where he flops on the ground afterwards. I like Roman because Roman does like the whole dive at oh, the yeah. same time. I think that looks cool. But I don't know. It's weird when you see people do like the flip, like if they hit them and they just flip over, and I'm just like. I, I, honestly, I love it, and I kind of I want to incorporate all of them. Like, I want to have one kind of like Romans, where I'm just diving and like catch them off guard. Of course, the the big killer like Goldberg's, and then I feel like just to show like some flash, have the flip one too. I, I want to learn all of them. So that, that that's my goal. Like, it's funny because like uh my spear, I, I do a spine buster, and my spine yeah. buster really comes off of Goldberg's uh spear, right? And I say that in the sense that I pick a dude up, I hold him, and I, I do a stalling spine buster, so I hold him up, and I yell at the crowd. And then I just lean back and just jack him straight into the ground. Oh, yeah. And, yeah, and you can hear it, and people go, oh. <laughs> and I tell everybody, I'm like, yo, my spine buster is ready to E for everybody. So it's not really a matter of who's catching it. It's just when they catch it. <laughs> I like that. I like <laughs> it's always that. funny. <laughs> That's crazy, man. Batman, but I'm just curious, man. So you, you've been training, you're in training currently, man. I'm just wanting to know, like, what's the worst bump that you are either taking or you are learning? Uh, I, I kind of want to knock on wood and say that I've been, like, immune to all the, the bumps. I mean, and I, I tell my classmates all the time, like, I'm used to it. Because, like, right before I played – right before I started training, I played arena football. And, like, man – I've been in so much pain from that that like these bumps are kind of like I wouldn't say lightweight because bumps suck. Don't get me wrong, but uh, if I had to put one on it, uh, I think the worst bump I've taken, and it, it didn't even suck like that. It's just I was I kind of tensed up on the landing, but it was the first time I took a belly to back. That was probably the, uh, and, but it, it didn't suck though. I just I tensed up, so like I woke up the next morning and I was like ah. But like, <laughs> nah. I mean, I love bumps. Though. I uh, the, the I I was telling I told the story uh probably like a couple episodes back actually randomly 
I was talking about how I saw Kira Tozawa do his uh his big senton, right? Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh, I want to try this so bad. So I did. And then I'll never do it again because it <laughs> sucked that much. I was like, I don't know how he does this and just wants to keep doing it. I was like, this move bites. Right. All of it. <laughs> Dude, that, that's literally me watching Ricochet. I'm just like, man, oh, my goodness. Okay. And he crash and burns on those like, see, it's funny, though, because like he'll do like a shooting star press and land it. And I'm like, oh, that's cool. But then you see him throw like the or he'll do like the 630 and he just like yeah. rolls through and looks like Sonic. But then like sometimes I watch him do those 450s and just eat it. And I'm just like, bro, I don't know how you don't like break your back. Like you got so much good body control. It's ridiculous. <laughs> oh, man. No, I love Ricochet, though. So bragging on my trainer again. I was sitting in class one night and like we were all just talking. I was like, yo, Ricochet is my dude. I love watching Ricochet. So I get home. My trainer sends me a video. He wrestled Ricochet uh, at PWX <laughs> in a tournament series, man. And I was like, yo, this is ridiculous. Like I was I was at loss for words. And I mean, and that's that's the thing I like. Like wrestling is such a small community. And like I've met so many guys that I grew up like idolizing. And like with PWX, with it being a bigger company, uh, they bring in so many big names that you see all over the Indies, you know, in Impact, New Japan. Like we had Minoru Suzuki a couple months ago. Like I got to meet him, hang backstage with him. Like it, I just feel like that. I feel like that adds to the experience as a trainee, like getting to see all these names and like see that they're people too. Because like we we had a new class start and a. There were, there were a few guys in the new class that, like, came to a few shows and saw guys that they see on the internet all the time. And they're like, oh, my God. And I'm just like, yo, don't be afraid to go talk to them because they're human at the end of the day. Like, go network with them. Like, It's funny because you talk about how your trainer, like, was showing off about how, you know, he trained with Ricochet. Mine did it, too. Mine did it, too. I feel like everybody's trainer does it because my trainer was like, Hey, I want to see my favorite match. And I was like, yeah, whatever. Show me. And he was like, here's me and Adam Cole. <laughs> I was oh. like, what? <laughs> oh, yeah. Like, All oh, of yeah. this. I was like, he's wild. So, yeah, he had a match with, like, Adam Cole. Uh, he actually ran a match with, uh, you know, rest in peace to the uh, to the OG. Uh, man, oh, God, I'm just, I just had his name on to my tongue. And I just lost it. Um I'll think about it in a second, but yeah, it's been, it's been wild, man. Or like you, you had a perfect example, right? I sat in the locker room and I got to talk to one of my uh, childhood heroes and my friend bumped me into uh Sandman and was like, Hey, here he oh, is. Wow. Like, yeah. So I got to meet, I get to be Sandman. It was crazy. Like getting those conversations and you're right. Like they're all down to earth. They just want to have a conversation. And I'm just like, damn dude, like this is, it's on another level, man. <laughs> right. I think that's the coolest thing when like you actually get that downtime with them. And like get to sit and talk with the guys and like just talk about their experience. I think the craziest one for me uh was at PWX. Um Ace Austin, he came in. And uh I actually uh they for some reason trusted me to uh take him back to his uh where he was staying at. And um like just the car ride, like we sat and had like a, a long conversation and like he just dropped so much knowledge on me and I was just like thankful for it because like a lot of guys that come in and do their own thing but like we have a lot of guys that come in and just drop knowledge on us and just they they help us really and uh i feel like because i you mentioned like who your trainers wrestle like I, I don't now that i think about it i don't think they do it to like brag i feel like they do that to like inspire us to like hey yeah. the don't think that just because you're in a small situation So, yeah, man, I, I just think all that's really cool. Yeah, no, and it, it just goes to show how small the wrestling. Was. Yeah, and, and you're absolutely right. It's it's more about like not so much of like, hey, let me show you like where I where I've been, but it's more of like, hey, we want we don't want you to get where we are. We want you to get beyond where we are. And uh, yeah, right. I 100 agree with you on that. That's that's definitely it's not a flex move because I and I get to I get the opportunity to talk to all sorts of different people like on this show. And it's cool because, like, they all know, like, someone who knows my trainer, which is, like, even beyond me. But it was New Jack. That's who it was. 
the OG uh, himself. So my boy got to wear a new jack, which is kind of cool. Um, I know that match is crazy. Can I help you? Um, I spent the computer with. Uh-huh. I have him with my knee, and then I just turned black. Okay. So, did you tell mom? No. So you just came in here to tell me? Mm-hmm. Okay. Hold on. <laughs> so you try to plug in. Oh, where's your power button at? So, and why are you in tears? It's, just, it's not that serious. It's, it's okay. <laughs> and why are you in here? Sheesh, man. The whole family be jumping in here like this. My apologies, man. Oh, no, it's all good. Sometimes dad life calls. Right. Take him with you. Duke. Go. Out. All right. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> no, not accepted now. <laughs> but hold on. So, uh, where were we talking at? Uh, New Jack. Okay, hold on. So I got to do this hand thing, let myself know, like, this is why I got to cut. But, yeah, so my trainer, he he wrestled New Jack, and uh, he was telling about tonight that him, uh, it's they met twice. Uh, most recently, actually, was like a month before he, like, passed away. But he was telling about the story about the first time that he wrestled him. And, uh, you know, like, the story was insane because, like, the guy that he was working with was like, hey, I can't get busted open. I got to go back to my shoot job. So my trainer was like, I'll, you know, I'll take the guitar shot. I'll take the staples, whatever is going to be thrown at me. I'll just do it. Don't worry about the other guy. And so New Jack, like New Jack, I don't know if you know, but he wears electrical tape. Mm-hmm. And instead of stapling my trainer, he stapled his thumb. And so his trainer, uh, his trainer was like, so, did, did he hit you with a staple? He's like, actually, he stapled himself. He was like, oh, well, then I mean he likes you. Otherwise, he would have just stapled you. <laughs> so it's just wild. And it's crazy. Like, I say my trainer's trainer, but my trainer's trainer is Ruckus, who was just inducted to GCW's Hall oh, of wow. Fame. Yeah. <laughs> so, and I've, I've, I've been in the ring and trained with Ruckus as well. So it's, oh, yeah. it's insane. But, uh, yeah, so to hear that and, and to see, like, the work that was being – uh, pass around. It's it's funny, but uh, yeah, just listening to his stories and you know have him. He has me talking to like Shane Douglas and to have Sandman and have these full conversations with these dudes. It's it's insane. But then you're right. You get like all this knowledge dropped on you about stuff that you just never expect to happen. Right, right. I mean, that's how I feel about this, man. Like I I didn't think I would be sitting doing a podcast as a as a trainee student. Like this this is great to me. Like. <laughs> I, I'm really appreciative of it. Yeah, no doubt, man. I appreciate that you were wanting to come on. So let's uh, let's get into something else, right? So after training, where right? I know I do. I don't know if you do, but I usually have like a post match snack that or post match snack kind of waiting for me. I'm just very curious. Do you have your own post match snack after training? Uh, I feel like I'm always on the road, man. So nine times out of ten, I'll hit Sonic or. Uh, I'll probably just go home and grab whatever whatever's at home. I don't really have like a, a set snack. Now, uh, on the way to shows though, we uh, it's essential that we stop at a at a at a QT gas station. Okay. <laughs> and just rack up, man, because show days are long. But uh, days are long. Like after training, nah, it's usually Sonic. I go grab some mozzarella sticks and just hit the road. So bad, bad. So um. Man, listen. I know that you've been in here and uh, you've been working this. I'm just curious, man. Like, what's one of the what's one of the hardest lessons that you've had to learn so far in this sport? I think for me, it was a uh, accepting the fact that you're gonna fail. Like, and you no, know, coming from like like I said, coming from that football background where like if you fail, like you. Like you go from like first stream to like a bench warmer if you fail. And, you know, when I first got into like training, if I would mess something up, I would kind of like get upset about it or like try to rush and do it more aggressively thinking that would help. 
And it just, it took me a while to realize like, yo, you're going to mess up. It's okay to mess up. That's why we train. And that's why, that's why my trainer like breaks everything down so little. So like, if you mess up, like he can go back and just retrain you and teach you everything you need to know. So um, I feel like that was my biggest issue. And, you know, I feel like everybody, I feel like a lot of people get down on themselves when they make mistakes, but um, like, I just, I, I'm always hard on myself. Uh, it's that, I guess it's that coaching mentality too. Cause I'm like, everything has to be perfect. Everything has to be perfect. But I feel like once I start to realize that it's okay to mess up here, the same football, like that's when I really started to understand things. And of course there's still wrestling is a, a growing sport. So there's always going to be stuff to continue to figure out. So I'm just, as long as I can keep this positive attitude that I have now, I yeah, it was, something, it was something for me too. Like my trainer like had to talk to me. Like one night I was doing a practice match. The practice match just went dog shit. I ain't even gonna front, man. It felt so, like <laughs> spots were missed. We were hitting things, our timing was off, everything, right? And it was being agented. It was there was an agent for our practice match. And he overloaded it. And I remember like getting so upset. Like after the match, I was like, I'm just not happy. And I got pissed and I like and, you know, we were even talking, it was like two years ago, and I threw some stuff, and I, I threw my gear. I was like, I'm just not happy with this. This is a terrible performance and whatever. And my trainer pulled me to the side, right? He goes, dude, I told you at the beginning of this, it's not if you get injured, but when you get injured. Right. So just remember that it's not if you mess up, but when you mess up. And from that moment on, like, even if I messed up in a match, bro, I did not care. I was like, all right, we're going to cruise through. We're going to hit this. And then next time we come back around, we're going to, I'll rewatch this match. I'll fo- figure out where I messed up. I'll, yeah. I'll sharpen it up and then go from there. And it was, it is super hard, man, because like I came from a collegiate wrestling background. I came from a military background. I came from yeah. like, you know, trying to be like a good example of my kid. Right. Like I'm always on the grind of like trying to be always on point and so to mess up as much as i was doing i was like i can't do this i was like this is tough right so once i learned how to let go everything became easy man <laughs> oh yeah oh yeah yeah a lot of people have a tough time getting over that that mental block but i mean that's why like at our school we stress like get out your head like get over yourself my trainer says all he says all the time like dude just get over yourself I think that's the other part I hear too a lot is like get over yourself and get out of your head and get out of your way. That's the other one too. Cause Mm -hmm. like, uh, I was telling someone, I was like, dude, there's no way that I'm going to be able to do like a 450. I was like, I'm way too old to do this. And, uh, yeah, like two months later, here I am like throwing 450s off the, off the top rope. I was like, oh, I was like, this is awesome. It's like now I'm no longer impressed with people doing 450s. (laughs) <laughs> that's so weird for me to say too like even say it on the podcast was like when people throw a 450 i'm like i nah man everybody what? can do them <laughs> uh, wrestle will definitely tell you how athletic you really are like, it, yeah it tests you in ways that you never thought you'd be tested yeah oh yeah <laughs> bet man so i'm just curious man what kind of advice have people have been giving you as you've been like making your journey through the sport um so uh, a lot of a lot of advice that uh, has stuck with me. So the first seminar I went to, uh, John Davis, he's he's a really really good wrestler throughout the like the East Side East Coast. He's he's wrestled everywhere, man. He's incredible, and like he comes to our home show, which is a PCW that we run in Columbia. But like we see him everywhere. But he did the seminar, and like the first thing he said was, uh, "If you're not in this business to make money, then you're in it for the wrong reason," and I mean, yeah, like we can all say like it's not about the money, but what we do sucks too much to not <laughs> get that 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 big payoff. And obviously, right now, like as a trainee, I'm not I'm not pressed on money, uh, but I mean, the this is a like we always call it the business, but like we got to treat it like a business, and like like we got we got to get paid, man. That's how I feel. Uh, some more advice. Uh, and this is just life advice that I've gotten from guys like just 
to never like ride that high horse, like never aim too high or too low. Just try to stay even. Don't like I I don't I mean I I think highly of myself as a person, but I don't let my my ego over triumph that to where I'm just like oh I'm I'm better than this guy or I'm better than that guy. Like I I cannot I can't be around people like that and I refuse to be that person. So um uh in ring advice. Relax, tuck your chin, breathe. <laughs> <laughs> All those are great advice, though, man. All of that. You know, it's it's cool, though, man. Because I and I, so you're the second person I've had on the podcast, just in general, right? That has never actually stepped into a match, right? Yeah. Um, and just like it's just so refreshing to hear people talk about, like, listen, this is what I've learned. This is what people have told me, right? Like this, I keep referring to it as a sport, but I understand this is a business, right? But even in sports, let's be real, <laughs> you got to get paid, right? <laughs> right? Like, yeah, that don't is care, we don't care if you're at the college level, you got to get paid. <laughs> right. That's literally what brought me to wrestling, man. Because like, like I said before, I was playing arena football and I was getting like, what, probably $20 at max. And I was driving an hour away just to play for this team. And like, they weren't even putting gas in my truck. So I was like, man, this is a waste of time because I'm, I'm out here getting beat up on the field. And like y'all are promising me more than y'all are giving me, right? But uh, I mean, yeah, everybody has to start somewhere. But I feel like I was already established, and I mean, at the time, I was I was still kind of bullheaded because I was just that was that football mojo, which I which is why that's what really got me into coaching too. Um, just a, a sidebar from wrestling, but like that's what got me into coaching because like there's too many egos. And what guys fail to realize in football and in wrestling, like you might be you might be the top dog in your area, but there's one of you in every area of the country, of the world, honestly. So yeah. that's why I'm I'm glad I'm in the situation I'm in now to like help people understand, like, yo, you're really like you're good, but there's always gonna be somebody better. So you just gotta you gotta do you. Stop trying yeah. to be the the big dog or or like, like you're on top of the world because in actuality, you're not. Yeah, I fuck around all the time. I tell people, I'm like, hey, you know that guy that you see, you know, somewhere and you know that he's working harder than you and training harder than you and it's probably lifting harder than you. And, you know, he's, you know, at practice working and at shoes working and at the gym working. Yeah. Yeah. That's me. <laughs> <laughs> instead of being like oh yeah there's a guy out no 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 that's me i'm putting in the work i'm putting in the time and that's why I right. and i feel like i study a lot like you know aside from just like doing all this like i i come and talk to a bunch of dudes here right i always take notes and then i go watch wrestling shows and i always take notes like so it's crazy to see how um how this whole thing works out but you made a, you made a great point right like at the end of the day though you got to stay humble Right. You got to remember that at the end of the day, it's like there's going to be someone out there who's bigger, badder, stronger, more intelligent, has more experience than what you'll ever have. So if you go in there cocky and then you get your ass whooped, you had it coming. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but man, listen, those are like all my heavy hitting questions that I have. But we do got to get into the second best segment of this podcast. And people under people always wonder. What's the first? And I tell them it's the Red Dogs Power Rankings that you can find every Sunday on our debate show. D'Angelo, this is the three count podcast, 10 count questions. This is how it works. I'm going to fire off 10 questions at you, rapid fast. Whatever's your answer, that's your answer. But all good. right. So we're going to put on the imaginary timer for added pressure. Bing. And here we go. SmackDown or Raw? Raw. Favorite color? Blue. Sonic or Mario? Mario. Favorite movie? Uh, Rush Hour. Yes. One, two, or three? <laughs> All of them. <laughs> All right. <laughs> PlayStation or Xbox? I got to say Xbox because I have an Xbox right now. <laughs> Favorite submission? <laughs> Sharp shooting. Okay. Night Owl or Early Bird? Night Owl. Favorite podcast? The three count. Like there's any other one out there. <laughs> Nominate one person that you want to see on this podcast. Um, one person I would like to see on this podcast. 
Uh, I really feel like you would get a kick out of my classmate Gina because, like I said, she runs the vlog and like Gina says some stuff to me that like I have to process. Like her, her mind just it just it's incredible. She's a she's a really she's a really cool person. Cool, cool. I would love you like pick her brain for thirty minutes. <laughs> I bet. And then last but not least, my favorite question to ask every single person that comes on this podcast: favorite curse word. Shit. <laughs> yeah. Right? right. So versatile. You can use it everywhere. <laughs> right, I'm just like, shit. <laughs> shit. I can't believe I forgot that. But those are all the questions I have for you. But D'Angelo, I just need you to let our viewers and our listeners know where they can find you. Okay. Um, I'm on Instagram and TikTok as a D dot Angelo underscore eighty one. I'm on Twitter at D Angelo underscore eighty one. No dot. Uh, I'm always open, always willing to talk to anyone, give advice, anything, man. I'm all about, I'm all about support and all about networking. That That's just my thing. So to anybody out there, D'Angelo is here. He's an open person, open book. <laughs> well, there you have it. You have all of his handles. You heard what he said. So you go out there, follow him, give him the likes, give him, give him the follows, give him subscribes. You know what to do. But oh, yeah. Most importantly, that means this is the end, so we got to take this home. Because this is the Three Count Podcast presents Now Enter the Ring. And like I said, I am your host, Clifford Red Dog Miller. That's right, the man that leads you up this mountain called wrestling. And, you know, like every good Sherpa, which I like to think I am, you got to have someone who's been there, done that, and can do it more efficiently than you can. And that's why it's never about me, but it's about who's entering the ring. And today you see him. He's now entering the ring. He is the man, the future legend known as D'Angelo. And you guys know what to do. Tune into the next episode and be there. Or you just wait for this episode to end. You wait for that outro. And then you choose another episode to listen to. Peace. Uh, so one thing I need you to do for me too is just, you know, be like, hey, this is D'Angelo, or you can say however you want, um, and you're checking out the Three Count Podcast. All right. Whenever I'm ready? Yeah, whenever you're ready. All right. <clears throat> What's up, guys? This is D'Angelo, and you're checking out the Three Count Podcast. What's going on, Three Count Nation? I'm Clifford Red Dog Miller with the catchphrase. But what I really want to do right now, go to twitter.com, right? Go over there, find us at the Three Count underscore pod, give us a follow, give us a like, give us a comment. We want to talk to you guys. Go to IG at the Three Count Pod, give us a like, give us a follow, leave us a comment. We want to interact with you. Go to youtube.com, give subscribe, turn the bell on, turn the notifications, leave a comment. We want to talk to you. Go to anger.fm forward slash the three count podcast. And in there, you can leave us a message and we will talk to you. Basically, what I'm trying to tell you is that we want to talk to you. We want to have fun with you guys. And we love listening to what you guys have to say. Also, one thing I need you to do for me, the three count podcast also has merchandise. Oh, at prowrestlingtees.com forward slash the three count pod. Please go buy our t-shirts. We love you guys and we hope you love us too. So. Show us some support, please.